George and Joanne Nicholson have been happily married for over 30 years. Every night before bed, they tell each other how much they love one another, they embrace, kiss, and go to sleep. And they've done this over 10,000 times. Pretty incredible, right? The big question is, what's the secret sauce to having a long-lasting marriage like George and Joanne's? And if your marriage isn't like theirs, what can you do to turn it all around? Hi again, YouTube. My name is Brad Browning, and I've been a marriage coach for the last 13 years, and I've helped thousands of ailing couples save their marriages from the brink of divorce. Now, you may have heard me from my other YouTube channel that focuses on getting your ex back. But since then, I've decided to start a separate channel devoted to giving marital advice only. So if you are new, you know what to do. Just hit that subscribe button to ensure you get updated when I release more marriage advice videos in the future. Now, in this YouTube video, I'm going to talk about the secret ingredient to a long-lasting and loving marriage. Every year in the U.S., around 2.3 million couples get married. And that breaks down to about 6,200 marriages every single day. Unfortunately, however, the majority of these unions end prematurely, and the percentage of marriages that end up in divorce or separation is steadily increasing. Not to mention the 2015 Ashley Madison hack exposed millions of men and women around the world who were at least interested in having an affair behind their partner's backs. So this begs the question, is marriage really this difficult? How can two people go from wanting to spend the rest of their lives together to calling it quits in just a few short years? And how do the remaining 40% of marriages, the ones like George and Joanne's, end up staying strong and resilient? Of course, you might guess that the secret to a loving marriage is trust, loyalty, and shared interests. But a recent research study has shown that the secret to a lasting and loving marriage actually comes down to just two simple traits, kindness and generosity. Sounds a little too easy, right? Well, the Gottman Institute conducted a study involving hundreds of married couples. With the help of a team of researchers, they hooked up all their subjects to electrodes and began asking them a series of simple questions in front of their spouses. Now, these were simple questions relating to how they met, uh, what they did that week together, and what their social lives were like. And as the subjects answered the questions, the researchers analyzed the couple's heart rate, blood flow, and sweat production. After collecting the data, they sent all the couples home and followed up with them six years later to see which couples had stayed together and which couples had separated or divorced. And the results of this study were pretty clear. The researchers divided the group into what they called the masters, that is, the couples that ended up staying together after six years, and the disasters, or the couples that had broken up. Now, the disasters, or the couples that broke up after six years or less, showed many signs of psychological arousal, arousal during the first Q&A session. Meaning, when the disasters were asked those simple questions about their marriage, their heart rates increased, they began to sweat more, and they were sent into what we call flight, fight or flight mode. Now, in short, the disasters were fearful of their partner's reactions to their answers. So instead of expecting to receive kindness, each of the disasters expected their spouse to attack them or belittle them during the interview process. Now, the masters, on the other hand, showed extremely low levels of physiological arousal during the interview period. And this calmer energy translated into more affectionate behavior, even during times of argument the masters were able to create a sense of comfort and ease that resulted in a more relaxed environment. Instead of expecting to be attacked during the interview process by their, by their spouses, they expected kindness and respect. So how does this information help you? Will just treating your spouse with kindness and respect help you fix your marriage overnight? Well, it's possible, but it is unlikely. A marriage must be built from the ground up. I mean, think about the house you live in. It doesn't matter how well built the kitchen is, if the foundation of your house is built on quicksand, then your house is going to collapse. So how do you rebuild the foundation of your marriage? Well, that is a massive question, and I don't want to cover everything I know in this video. Uh, but if you want to learn more, simply head over to my website, marriageguy.com, and watch the free video presentation there on that website. In it, I'll tell you the three things that you must do right now if you want to get your marriage back on track. Again, the URL to that free video presentation is marriageguy.com. And if you do have any quick questions you want to ask me about this topic, uh, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments section below. I do my very best to get back to everyone who leaves a comment. But back to the topic at hand. There are a few small changes in behavior that you can make right now to start improving your marriage. So let's shift our focus back to that Gottman Institute study. After the, the first master and disaster test, they decided to run another experiment. 
They invited over 100 married couples to a gorgeous bed and breakfast retreat, and they studied their behaviors over the course of a few weeks. They analyzed how each partner reacted to their spouse's attempt to, to connect with them. So for example, uh, say a husband was trying to connect with his wife during breakfast. He might say something like, aren't these omelets bloody fantastic? Now at this point, his wife has one of two choices to make. She can acknowledge and engage with her husband in a positive manner, or what the study called turning towards her spouse. Or she can choose to either ignore and belittle him, or what the study called turning away from her spouse. So for example, to turn towards her husband, she could say something like, Yes, love, these omelets are just delicious. In contrast, she could also say something like, don't you have anything better to say? Or outright ignore her husband to, to sort of turn away from him. And like the first experiment, the researchers followed up with every couple six years later to see which couples had stayed together and which had separated or divorced. Now the findings in this study told a similar story to the first one. The couples that ended up getting divorced or separated responded negatively to their spouses more than 70% of the time. The ones that remained happily married responded positively or turned towards their spouse almost 9 times out of 10. Now of course, like I said, changing your behavior overnight will probably not solve all your marital problems right away. Kindness and generosity are some of the most important traits to have in a marriage, and that is an important thing to keep in mind moving forward. But if you are in a rocky marriage and you're worried that you and your spouse might be calling it quits soon, then I highly recommend you head over to my website, marriageguy.com, and watch the free video presentation there. Again, the URL is marriageguy.com. Alternatively, you can also receive personal email coaching from me directly. And if you want to get details on my personal coaching program, go to marriageguy.com slash coaching. I want to keep this one short, so that is it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I always do my very best to reach out to every single one of you. And uh, please remember also to like this video if you have found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.